16 Lowell Street, Reading, Mass. On Wednesday, April the 3rd, 2019, at 7 p.m. On the application of George uh, Suji. Suji. Rogers, pursuant to Master of Laws, Chapter 40A, Section 10, for a variance under the Reading Zoning Bylaws, Section 6.3 6 and 7.4, to allow an existing non conforming deck to remain, or a determination under Master of Laws, Chapter 40A, Section 7, to allow the deck which was built without permits to achieve legal non conforming status on the property located 193 Bancroft Avenue, Reading, Mass. Unless there is an objection, I will dispense with the reading of the abutters list, except to say that the abutters were notified, as were the following. Board of Selectmen, Lease Department, Building Department, Health Department, Engineering Division, Town Clerk, Fire Department, Conservation Commission, Assessor's Office, CPDC, and members and associate members of the Board of Appeals, as well as the Planning Boards of Wakefield, North Reading, Woburn, Winfield, Stoneham, and Wilmington. Testimony given before this board is taken on the road. So if you think you may want to speak this evening, please stand and raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. I do. Um, I'm going to ask to begin this uh, case before you do your presentation or whatever um, to go to uh, Mark. Um, our building inspector, uh, because he has some information on this, and um, the letter of denial, um, which was actually written by Glenn, um, the building officer and building uh, inspector, had written the letter, but Mark has done most of the work on this. He's our zoning officer and our building commissioner. So could you give us a background on this, Mark? Sure, Mr. Chairman. Uh, on or about December 8th, 2018, the applicant applied for a permit to uh, build an addition structure on the left side of the property. At that time, when they submitted their plot plan, um, Glenn Redmond, the building inspector, noticed a deck on the right side of the property that appeared to be in violation of zoning. Uh, we found no permits for the uh, said deck. The applicant claimed that the deck was there when they bought the house and uh, should be exempt for a 10 year statute of limitations for becoming um, grandfathered, legal non conforming, based on no, the town took no action in those 10 years. So, Glenn wrote a denial letter seeking um, for the applicant to seek a variance on that non conforming deck. That is what the applicant has done. In, in the meantime, I have found um, aerial photographs from 2015, which uh, Kristen and I supplied all the board members from 2015, and more importantly, from 2008, um, that clearly show the deck in question on the right side of the property, 2008 being approximately 11 years ago. So, it creates um, kind of a unique situation for, for two reasons. One reason is, I don't know if it's the board, the board's, under the board's, board's purview to make a determination whether it's pre-existing non-conforming in the 10-year statute of limitations. And the other question is, there's, there's some existing retaining walls and terraces that are on the the paper street, um, which also creates kind of an issue. Um, I don't know, it would be still up to the board. I don't know if their purview would be, it almost should have been um, an appeal of the building inspector's decision versus a, a finding or a determination whether mm -hmm. this is legal. Okay. I, I will say in the building department's recommendation um, considering we found this new information I just today um, we would have no problem with the deck as being pre-existent we would ask that the retaining walls be taken off the paper street as part of a condition to issue the building permit on the left side but we would allow the deck to stay okay 
So, <clears throat> in actuality, uh, what we have is a a deck which was built um, before you purchased the property. However, you purchased the property in um, 2010. Um, so you don't really qualify for a Section 7 on under 40A at this point because it hasn't been 10 years yet. Um, so what we're doing is we're asking, you're asking for, I just want to get this straightened out, you're asking for a variance for the deck as it stands right now. And the building department has given you a more or less a hold on the proposal on the left hand side for the two story addition that you want to put on because there is a zoning um, hindrance or whatever you want to, violation uh, that needs to be addressed before we go forward on that aspect of it. So in reality we're not really talking about the request for the addition on the left hand side of the house. Yes sir, so the addition on the left hand side of the house, I believe the town doesn't have an issue with that. My understanding is that the issue is simply with the deck on the right side of the house, which was pre-existing. I do have a copy of the appraisal from when we purchased the house, which does include pictures. Unfortunately, I don't have a copy for everyone. However, it does show that the deck was there in the same fashion as it currently exists. And in speaking with neighbors, it's been there for at least 20 years. Um, our position would be, I guess, twofold. We'd have the first argument, which is that it should be grandfathered in as it has been in existence. Even, even though we may not have owned the property for 10 years, it has been in existence for 10 years and thus should be grandfathered in. As a secondary or ancillary argument, it would be that um, to the extent you're not going to grandfather it in, that it would be a variance, should be appropriate in light of the circumstances. Um, <coughs> Mr. Chairman, if I could just make a, a right. point of order. The 10 year statute um, isn't about ownership. It's about when the structure was built. Mm -hmm. just, just for clarification. Mm -hmm. So her ownership period has nothing to do with the 10 year statute. And I didn't know that you had come up with a, um, is it a, what kind of, uh, documentation you have that it pre-existed yes sir uh, the so i do have a copy of the of the appraisal from when we purchased the house um the appraisal was done in april of 2010 and that shows um again i apologize that i don't have have copies for everyone i similarly was just researching this recently uh, in preparation it does show a picture of the deck that is in existence um, at the time of the appraisal. Um, in doing some research, I also did go upstairs to the archives office, I think that's what you call it, and they were able to, to provide me with a printout, I believe this is from 2005, mm -hmm. which um, shows a copy of the deck, a picture of it, again, the same size. So I think read all together, that in combination also with the pictures that they provided, I think certainly there's an argument it's been in existence for 10 years. And I would argue that the same rationale would apply to, to the retaining wall. Um, well, well, we'll take for submission the um, 2005 card, which you can pass around to everybody. We'll take that and put that in the card. And the other uh, one that actually been presented by our building inspector, which is the overview, uh, that was taken in 2000 and... Uh, you should have two. One was from 2015, and then I found one right. from 2008. And the 2008 is more than... Approximately more than the, Correct, more than the... Right. Um, the 10, ten, ten year. years. 10 years, right. So it qualifies... I'm, I'm glad you did your research yeah. um, because otherwise we would be stuck in a situation that um, you'd have to prove the variance issue. Um, 
It's yeah. definitely more dicey. I think this is the more straightforward <laughs> argument. So. Okay. Um, anybody seen those? So, in essence, what we really have to do is to decide um, where we are in terms of um, the finding yeah, for Section 7 of Chapter hey, that's 40 what I would finding. And then we still have to address um, the retaining walls or the structures retaining walls that are on town property. Yes, sir. Okay. That's, uh, that, that, that is a question I had. Maybe the building inspector could answer it. Obviously, it's a paper street there. Correct. Is it, in fact, town property? Or uh, is it, uh, I, you know, we, we didn't get any deed research or anything. Many times, these paper streets were laid out, but, you know, they're not actually owned by the town. Right. So there's two, there's two answers. Okay. If it's if it's town property, that's in one issue. Right. And if it isn't town property and it's considered a paper street, the issue is in in my understanding of paper streets through the years, uh, each abutter has rights to the use and rights to the middle of, of the street. Right. But you're not allowed to put structures on it. You you can use it for your enjoyment and pleasure, but mm -hmm. without structures. Okay. That's my understanding. I'm, yeah. I'm sure there's probably a case law last week that changed it, but yeah. Well, okay. I think so the building. I think the building inspector is correct. From the times that I've been involved, uh, it's always to the middle of the street as long as there's no erected structures. Um, whether it's a town-owned street or not, uh, paper street, it's existed for yeah. apparently quite a long time. It's never. It's not wide enough. It doesn't meet any of the no. criteria. And I look looking at the aerial photographs. I doubt if it uh, ever will be brought into that property. It would. It wouldn't serve any purpose at all. You know. So I doubt it. Unless there was an easement, uh, for some reason, for, right to for, there. for utility, maybe or something. <clears throat> so. But right, I don't think as as a as a roadway. I don't think it'll ever be extended, but because it, it actually you've got you have properties at the end of that <laughs> that you you would they would they'd have to be taken by any domain or something if you were to extend that street to match another street. Yeah. Right. I doubt if it ever would. So what we're really looking at is trying to narrow it down mm -hmm. is two things. One, uh, do a finding under Section 7 um, of Chapter 48 in the 10 year. And number two, um, do something with the, I would have, you said that you're, the town would be accepting of um, the deck as it stands now, uh, provided that the structure, the retaining wall, be removed. Correct. And it would be put back, graded back to natural. And I, <clears throat> I think that that's something that we, we would be able to accommodate. Obviously, that would be a significant expense in order to take that down and rebrand the land. We, we have already gone, because we have wetlands before us, before the Conservation Committee, and, and they were happy with how everything thing was. Um, so I, we can certainly go back and do that. One argument that I would raise to you, however, and this is just one of fundamental fairness, which I've already raised with Glenn, and um, I think you, it's very evident just by looking at, at the map here on Tower Road, um, which is the Peeper Street, is that this abutter to the right, or to the right, to the right when looking at the map, to the left posturally, um, you look at the driveway there, that's entirely on the paper road, and they were just granted mm. a permit to build exact same situation on the right side of their, their property. Same thing we were doing. We're looking to build on the left side of our property, and we have a retaining wall on the left. So I guess just as a matter of fundamental fairness or equity, to me it's just, it's difficult to palette the fact that, you know, it's 
it's the exact same thing. One person has a, has a driveway. We have a landscaped wall, yet for some weird reason it, it, it does seem that we're being treated differently. I, I guess I missed something. I see the, um, the, the driveway. Correct. Uh, which is not considered a structure. And the usage aspect of it um, is, an, is, is not an issue. Okay, so but now you said that they got a per the people to the right of you received a um, a building permit or something to without build? needing a variance, correct? So I just to me that that seems a little in incongruous that that a driveway is okay, but but a retaining wall is not. And I did try to to research what constitutes a structure for purposes of you know. Um, a variance, and I and I was not able to find that. Perhaps you could point me in the right direction in terms of what, what, it's in the bylaws. what your your uh, your bylaws state. Mark, but I didn't see an exception for a driveway. There is there is a definition of a structure. Go ahead, Mark. Right. So driveways aren't considered structures just because they don't require building permits or anything to that effect. But the retaining <coughs> wall does. Right. Retaining wall does. And and in, I don't want to say in defense of the building department. I know nothing about the history on the right side property. Um, that driveway could have been there from the 30s when the house was built. The, the retaining wall terrace area seems like it was constructed recently. Um, our attention was not originally brought to the retaining walls on the paper street. It was originally brought, our eyes focused on the deck, and then secondary was the stuff <coughs> on the paper street. Mm -hmm. And in terms so, of so, I'm sorry. No, please so, go ahead. so the denial te technically wasn't on the paper street structures. The denial was on based on the side deck. Yeah. Right, and it seems like the deck. You're okay with as you you can see. We haven't done anything to the the property. Um, we haven't touched the retaining walls that are there. I believe if you look at the appraisal, you can probably see. Um, Whatever structure is there and has been there for 10 years has, has been there. We haven't touched it. It's the same that's still there. I guess the only difference is whether some of it is on the Peeper Street vice. The deck is clearly on our property. I guess that would be the only difference between whether something should be grandfathered in or not. Mr. Chairman, can I ask a question, mm -hmm. please? Yes. You said you were just in front of conf conservation? So we went before conservation about... In dis I believe it was like December time frame. Was that in regards to the addition on the yeah. left? Nothing to do with the structures on the right. Okay. No, they looked at the whole thing. I was just looking for clarification. Thank you. Right. Correct. Because I guess anytime you're building and there's wetlands behind, you need mm. to go before conservation. So we did right. do that. So I have a, I have a question, uh, Mark. When the application was denied and kicked to us, did you have the information showing the structure was over 10 years old at that time? No. So you do have that now. If you did have that information, would you still have rejected it? If uh, no, it, if the applicant would have provided us information to show it was already there for 10 years in existence, we would have looked at it a lot different and it probably wouldn't have got this far, to be honest. So I, waiting on the, no disrespect, waiting on the applicant to give us mm -hmm. information to make us change our mind, it wasn't happening. I just, Right. Thought I would research this before we get, in case the question came up while we're here. Yeah. And when I saw these pictures and stuff, it, it changed my mind. No, that makes sense. The procedure is going to go to us, okay. and, unless you get new information. So I'm wondering if there's even a third option. If if that's the case, should maybe this be withdrawn without prejudice? Because unless there's ambiguity, I don't I see why the ZBA would even need to make a finding. And then the, also, I want to also make a point about the retaining wall, because that's also, I consider a structure over 10 years old, so I'm not sure why we would need to impose a condition and impose a hardship on the applicant to remove that structure if it's not bothering anyone right now and really isn't too relevant to, you know, what's before us. That's my two cents. Mr. Chairman, if, if I may, mm -hmm. I just want to add that um, not on these pitches that I saw today show me the retaining walls and... Mm -hmm. So I had no way of knowing if those have been in existence for 10 years or not. If she has documentation that's saying they are, then mm -hmm. that's fine. That's a good point, yeah. 
I don't know where we were circulating this. Perhaps this will shed some light because it, I believe it should show. Um, and it's kind of hard to see, but this, it's really, see that those, it's where those plants are. Yeah. It's just a wall that goes down. I wouldn't even call it a wall. It's more like a, it's the way the land goes. It's it becomes, it steps. It steps. I can see the gray changes. There's no wall. So There's 94 no wall. So 94 in the front down to 84 or something like that in the back. But no. 86 to it's, 84. That's exactly right. There's no wall. It's simply steps. Steps in the landscape. <clears throat> Correct. Like probably two and a half feet or so each. Yes, sir. Okay, I'm only I'm only being devil's advocate because it says landscaped retaining wall. That's that's what your plot plan says. Mm. That mm. in essence, it is a retaining wall. Mm. It's of about two and a half feet or three, maybe at the most. And there's two as the grade is stepping down. That's how I would I would read this. And there's steps on two sides to be able to get through, past the retaining mm. portion. Of it. What is it made out of wood ties? Um, it is wood. It's. And I, I, arguably, I could see where you'd say it's a retaining wall. There's a piece of wood with a landing, and then it goes down, and then like to two Flattery. steps, then wood, and then a landing. Is that retaining wall over four feet? No. It's then it would it be a because you need a permit for a retaining wall over four feet, yeah. I believe. So if it's under four feet, I would say it's not even a structure. Potentially, I don't know. So maybe it's not even. Well, it definitely goes to. So if it was made out of concrete block, it goes to the bottom of the foot and how much fill it holds back. Mm. I don't know if we need to get that detailed if right. one of the board members has, <laughs> has seen it and it's <clears throat> we're making a mountain out of a molehill, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But and again, in defense of the building department, this is all information that Sounds no disrespect, this is information we weren't getting two weeks, I mean, you know, two months mm -hmm. ago, to be honest. About, you know, how it was made and all that stuff. Well, I have to commend you for some of the work that you have done recently because in situations like this, uh, it would have been continued uh, to get that information, which would have slowed you down. Um, the other issue is I want to address Eric being our attorney. Uh, and attorney. I'm not the town attorney. No, no, no. I'm <laughs> <that. laughs> and attorney. I'm crystal clear with that. <laughs> and attorney. But um, in terms of um, finding... Uh, for the deck, for example, mm -hmm. that it now is compliant. Um, at the time of a resale or whatever, this would come up. Mm -hmm. um, if the board moves and accepts the deck as part of it, the retaining wall is another issue, or the steps or whatever. Mm -hmm. Take one thing at a time. Uh, would that not come into uh, play? Probably uh, not. Problem, almost, almost definitely not, and uh, because we have the we have the documents, or yeah, well, the I mean, owner has the documents indicating that it's over ten years. Well, I mean, maybe maybe I can unpack a couple things that we've talked about. Okay. I'll just take my turn if that's all right with the board. Absolutely, that's why. Right. Well, first off, uh, thank you for all of your help. As everyone said. I was expecting that this was going to get continued because mm. we only had an assessment card from 2016 and Mark comes in with aerial photos and you have all this fabulous research. So it's very easy for me, at least, to reach the conclusion that the deck has been there for 10 years. So that's my first part here. If you get the, as Nick has greatly suggested, if the board were to consider um, that you didn't need to be here, that in light of this new information, it completely um, obviates your need to come before this board. And Mark can, is willing to issue you your permit. That's going to be the end of it. Nobody's going to seek beyond that. Nobody's going to, you know, look and see any type of investigation, just like you did when you bought the house. Like, you're like, okay, great, there's a deck. It comes with the house, it looks nice, and, you know, we'll have coffee out there. Like, that's literally the extent of any sort of inquiry. Um, if we do make a finding um, that will get recorded and that will be part of the public record and I guess will be, you know, available in case anyone has to do anything in the future in terms of extending it with a special permit or whatever, but I have a feeling that 
future building inspectors, hopefully Mark's with us for a very long time, um, will pull this file and be like, oh yeah, I remember that one. We agreed that that was going to be 10 years. Uh, you know, you'll have to go and get a special permit, but you won't have any issues because, you know, we, we accept that kind of internally as grandfather. So I guess the answer to your question, John, there probably wouldn't be any, any real even question about it, you know? And then in terms of the paper street issue, um, that's less of an issue for me, although the only thing that I'll note with that was with the paper street, um, Mark is spot on with his interpretation of it's a shared um, access for both sides. The driveway, the use of that is consistent like with what you would expect your rights in a paper street to be, which would be to pass over and across. Structures obviously, you know, would impede that. But it's my opinion that that's just a private thing between you and your neighbor. That's kind of a, I don't know, an interesting ancillary property right that you have that is for you and your neighbor to litigate and, you know, resolve kind of at your own speed and as things come up. I don't know that this is an appropriate um, forum, you know, for that. Or, and I, on a personal level, I'm not. I'm not thinking that we need to police that, and I think that you know the board probably has enough information if it does proceed with a secondary analysis for those retaining walls to see those as maybe not a structure, um, having been there for more than 10 years, or maybe just not even relevant because really what you're looking for is a building permit to do something on the completely opposite side of your house, which is why you came to the building department in the first place. So I think that that's it. Okay, so we've got a number of different options out there. Side. Well, I, I don't want to oversimplify it, but the petitioners here tonight for one thing. Either we determine that this thing has been there for 10, more, 10 plus years, or it has not. And if it has not, then she needs a variance. If it has, then she needs a determination that it is grandfathered. Okay? That's what's been asked tonight. This whole thing about the retaining thing has been an introduction into this process for the very first time tonight. And my view is we should be acting on what we've been asked to do tonight. And that is to make a determination or make a variance determination. And, and as far as the retaining wall is concerned, I hate to say it, but it could be a discussion for another day, okay? Um, okay. And uh, I kind of share what Eric is saying. On my end, that, that, that may become a, that may be a non-issue as well, okay? That's where I come from. Okay. Nick, I don't have any information to add, but I almost wonder if it's up to the applicant to decide if they want to withdraw without prejudice or want the board for your own peace of mind to make a finding. And I'd be okay with either of those two options. So. Okay. Yeah, I would support the next position as well as <clears throat> and everything else that's been stated and that, you know, in the consideration of a future sale and stuff like that and passing it on to someone even 20, 30, 40, 50 years from now, that the board has a document that recognizes a decision that it was all fine and fair play in the in the paper place for these retaining walls and that the deck has been acknowledged as being over 10 years in term and stuff. So I think that that is a choice for you to make as well. I think that I found a consensus that in my mind it's just a minor more or less landscape wall more or less a retaining wall in a structure and we'll see that the deck is fine and you should be able to do what you need on the other side of the property. Robert. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I think I pretty much have uh, the same mindset as most of the board that, uh, number one, it, 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 the de they were here for the deck issue. And I think evidence has been presented that the deck has been there in excess of 10 years. Therefore, by Mass General Law, is grandfathered and legal non-conforming. It does not encroach on the paper street or anything, so I, I think that's fine. Uh, the retaining walls, 
again, they're timber walls. That they're not poured concrete or anything. They're timbered walls. They could be, I suppose, taken down easily. Certainly, much easier than if it were a concrete wall. Uh, it only appears, looking at, uh, I think there was only one elevation taken there between the top of the wall and the bottom. There was only a couple of foot difference on there. So it's something maybe able to be done that way. Now, I believe Mark mentioned that uh, a building permit would, they, they, they have to be looking at some conditions on that retaining wall, pri possibly prior to an issuance of a building permit. I don't know if we could, I, I don't believe we issue conditions to a finding at all. And it's two different things. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the size right. It was advertised on the deck, and the determination is it's been there in excess of 10 years, period. Right. Now, my only concern is <clears throat> the basis for the denial was the deck. The basis for the denial was not the retaining wall. Right. So it really would be an undue hardship, I think, on my part to have to come petition again before you file all the paperwork, notify all the abutters about something, an issue that was never a basis for denial in the first place. I mean, it was the deck. And, and I, I came prepared to discuss the deck. Now... The issue is seems to be something that was never an issue before, which is somewhat well. That's, that's what I'm getting at, it. and I don't know if we could even discuss it tonight in regards to the retaining walls and the removal of what could be done because it wasn't advertised at all, and neighbors did not, weren't notified that this was the issue. They were notified about the deck and not uh, retaining walls in the public. Well, maybe the applicant in the town could come to an understanding of what to do about that. And if not, then maybe they would have to come back on the retaining walls. I don't know. Well, Mr. Mr. Chairman, just to address one thing, the when I talked about conditions, that was based on, you know, a variance. Mm -hmm. If you're not going to issue a variance, you're going to do a find in under Section 7, then, yeah, the conditions go away. So Right. That was the reason for the conditions, was under right. the variance. Um, so, I, you know, I, you know whether the applicant and the town could work out I, something, know, I don't know. I, I mean, I don't think it's the building department's responsibility to be policing uh, paper streets either. Right. Um, if that didn't show, we wouldn't know, so to speak. Um, if it's the consensus of the board that it's a non-issue, I'll let it be a non-issue. That doesn't mean we're giving them permission to do it, to do anything else. I mean, it, it could be a fight at another time, or it might never even come up. Right, right, right. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. So I'll, I'll withdraw my condition request mm -hmm. based on the information that's been talked about, about, you know, landscaped area versus retaining walls. Okay. Yeah, you know, it's 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 not the building department's fight. Originally, it was the deck, and that just happened to get pot B. Well, it's in your court, but before you do that, let me summarize my concerns. Number one, we're here because of the deck. Um, if the board uh, goes back and looks at the documentation that's been provided, that it has in seven has been more than a 10-year period, then um, we're going to do a finding on that. That's that's one option. Certainly, you could say, I, I want to withdraw without prejudice at the, rate, at the present time, and this doesn't get addressed. But at the same time, the result is down the road, uh, legally, I could be addressed, maybe not in your lifetime, but if you decide to sell the house and now it comes back up again, somebody may have to clear it all up. So my suggestion to you is let the board make, make the finding. At least you get clarity on that particular issue uh, in terms of the retaining wall and whatever. Uh, I think as, as the board consensus is 
And it wasn't really brought up until the last minute because it wasn't addressed in the original uh, request for relief. Uh, therefore, um, could it come up later on? Yes. In your lifetime? Don't know. We don't know what your lifetime is on that piece of property. And the reality is that when the board makes a decision, it's making a decision not for you. It's for the property, whoever owns the property. So should you sell the property tomorrow, then somebody else is going to have to come back with that. So my recommendation would be to allow the board to make the finding unless you definitely want to withdraw without prejudice, which we would allow you to do. That's always your alternate option. Just, I have a question. Procedurally, how long does it normally take for the finding to be issued? And then once the finding is issued, are there an, is there an appeal period or anything like that? Well, the board has to, <coughs> the board has to <coughs> write up the decision, which is on the finding. Right. It takes upwards of two weeks to do so. And it, it's, it's a 20-day appeal period for anybody in the area, which could or could not be your neighbor or somebody <coughs> across the street or whatever. So we're, we're probably talking a very short period of time. But if this is something that you and the building department want to move on, um, <coughs> that's up to uh, Mark and the building department how soon they will allow you to address what you're really here for, and that is for the other side of the house. issuance. Yeah. Yes, the left-hand side of the house, which is the two-story structure. Now, Mark, Mr. Chairman, if I might, just for just for housekeeping clarification, in the original denial letter, February 13th, from Glenn, it says we move a portion of the deck and retaining walls. Oh, so, great! So then that so oh, well, that is part moment, of the please, denial. Wait. So it was addressed in the original denial. Mm -hmm. So if you want to consider the retaining walls part of the deck that's grandfathered. Then I guess the the section seven finding covers both. I mean, I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> I'm a lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> say it does. Okay. Well then, you want us to move forward. I think that that probably it sounds like just to have it in existence. If anyone buys the house down the line or if we want well, to do something else that might protect your us. Your protection is okay. what we're interested in. But the pro for, for now, but it's for the property's protection down the road. Got it. That makes sense. Okay, so do I hear a motion to move forward on um, accepting the documentation that has been provided this evening? Uh, for justification for finding that the existence of the deck, I'm not going to put it. Is it's grandfathered under Mass General Law? No, it's Chapter right? Seven. Yeah, is it Chapter Seven? Yeah. Well, it specifically says in here so that you can yeah. make a determination yeah. that the variance is required, 40, or the determination that the structure that existed is mm. existing more than. Right. Than 10 years in the, by the structure. He's yep. I th interpret that to mean the deck and whatever else is there. That's the way I read it. His rejection. That's the rest. Are you making the motion sign? No, I just want to try to make the I thought Bob was moving in that direction. <laughs> I'll be glad to do it. Okay. Write it up. So. Yeah, I, I, will, I will make that motion that we make a finding uh, that the deck in question uh, falls under the uh, statute of chapter mass general law chapter 40 subsection 7, seven. I believe it is uh, that it has been in existence in excess of 10 years and is therefore considered a uh, uh, non-conforming legal structure uh, that the deck in question mm -hmm. yeah do we have a second to that Second. Okay. Seconds. Any more discussion? Hearing none. Voting members, uh, Eric, Sai, myself, Bob, and Nick. All in favor? Five zero zero. <coughs> um, again, you'd have to wait for the board to get it written up. As soon as it is, 
Um, we get 14 days to do that, but it hasn't been taken 14 days. Um, and then uh, we need to get that to the clerk, and there's a 20-day appeal period. That is by Chapter 40A also. <coughs> so there's no plans to stamp because that's in Mark's purview. And Mark, I think, has already said that um, if this issue, whether it's a structure or whatever, is brought up some other time, that'll have to be addressed separately. Uh, as Eric said, probably will not come up, but you never know. So I think you are in good straits right now. Okay, that's all we... I'm not going to not going to stamp any plans because it's not. Did you want to you. withdraw the uh, at the variance as well? Yes, yes. I'm sorry. Just before we close the meeting. Yeah. Well, we did we did the finding and it's the same yeah. thing. So. Um, it says one or the other, or yeah. the or is the key word. Okay. You, you can allow just wanted to bring it up before we close. The or meeting. a determination, yeah. right? It, it says advertise, in the, advertise or. So it was either or. Yeah. Well, by by finding that it's a legal uh, non-conforming structure right. now right. by so Chapter 48, Section 7, we've gone to the next level. How, how, how about if when I write the decision, I'll put in uh, our finding constitutes a non-requirement for a variance. No. Something that effect. That would be great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that clarifies that. And that yes. finding. I'm not at No, no need for variance. No need for variance. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, so you're all set? Thank you for your time. I really, okay. truly appreciate it. Thank you, Mark. I no appreciate it. We'll get the bill later on. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck with the new construction. I appreciate yeah. it. Have a good night. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Is what are we facing? We have one case before us on the seventeenth. We have two. We have Burger King. Oh, we have two now. Mm -hmm. okay. um, it's in your packets. There's an agenda in your packets. And it's um, Burger King and Twenty Street. Okay, we still have another one out there that uh, really bothers me. Um, <laughs> we heard it back in, um, originally we opened the case and it was continued immediately. Um, You're talking to Zelia? Yeah. Yes. Oh. And uh, that has been uh, continued once. A second time is requested right. to come in and it's requested to, con they're, they're making the decision that it should be continued until May, right. with the likelihood of being continued another time. I think Chapter 40A is kind of being stretched now because we're looking at well beyond six month period that that case is floating around there open. Um, I think the easiest thing is to have the person withdraw from that, but I, I couldn't find, I, I was looking for 240, I couldn't find the exact mm -hmm. um, section on the time frame for rehearings or for continuations. So I thought continuations were based on mutual agreement. Well, the mutual agreement on this last one wasn't mutually agreed upon. Well, they continued it. They just now. said, we're going to, we propose to continue. To can you continue this to the first Monday in May, was it? But it, at the same time, if the applicant's proposing to do a continuance, they can't come back and say that you didn't hear it in a timely manner. If they requested the continuance, they would have no case on a timely manner. It wouldn't be um, constructively approved. That's my thought, if they're the ones asking the continuance. We, 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 I would suspect we do have a record of them requesting the continuance. It's in the, it's in the folder, right? Yeah, yeah. I think Andrew has an email. Yeah, whether email. it was email or what, we have a printout of that email. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll just pass on that for now then. Mm -hmm. 
All right, I have to go because I have a complaint about lights, and it's dark enough I can go now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Have a good weekend. Yeah, you too. Any other business before the board this evening? You don't have any minutes. That's good. Just our recent pen pals sending us things. Yes. So uh, we, we, I suppose we. Uh, 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 I suppose the in three different forms. <laughs> <laughs> yes, one of them. And the sheriff to delivered the other one today. Yeah, yeah we had the sheriff. The other one today. Huh? Oh, you didn't get that one. I haven't received one. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I was, I was going to be a wise to say, yeah, it's bad. I suspect it might have been a constable or something. Is there supposed to be like a constable? I kind of forget. Well, you can ask for motion to have a constable. Well, I just don't know. My wife told me that this is us, but yeah, that was the first thing that I did is I called Andrew to Because normally under the statute, you're supposed to send it by certified mail. I'm like, why am I getting served? You know, like this is, you know. This is the first time. Have you guys done this? No, we've, we've got it before. Is that maybe yeah. Town, Town Council usually handles it, and we never hear any more about it. So, but does that maybe have something Town. to do with Should this particular new but one? In this particular trial by jury? Yeah, in this particular one. It's a trial, man. Reading through it, sir, was he requested trial by jury. Yes. <laughs> so, we would be bear witnessing at a proceeding. I don't know. We've the we've gone through that. We've gone through that before. On uh, I think on one, at least one, other 40B, um, and it never came to that. There was um, mm. testimony taken, yeah. um, but it was taken by virtue of uh, uh, mail. It was not taken <coughs> under personal declaration. Right, right. Declaration, declaration yeah. Right. Declaratory. Yeah. And it was a housing project, not a. Uh, development of a deck being retrofitted because this, if I recall, is the deck at the golf club. Is that correct? Well, that was that. that that's the other one. Um, two of them recently were being yep. served. Oh, the second one that I have received is another project. Well, the one that we're talking about, Trial by Jury. I only got served you're one from the golf you're club. You're listed in the new one. Yeah. yeah, I haven't received it yet. We, then you haven't been served yet. No, I have you not have been served. Mm -hmm. I feel left out of my burden. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that was, that was on Lake Street, Lake Street Eaton, 40B. Right. And that's... Uh, oh, the Lake Street, yeah. So who... That, that would be very interesting to see what happens because um, we got something from Chapel tonight, too, I see. Um, that's a copy um, that came in addressed to you, but it was also for... Um, the, the affordable housing. Okay. So there was a copy addressed to you too, so I gave you the copy. Okay. Um, we haven't we haven't heard anything back from Mass Housing yet in accepting um, our um, vote on the 40B proposal, um, if they've accepted it or not. I would assume mm -hmm. that that is there. Once they accept it, I think I'm wondering if this individual is going to have any standing at all. Well, that's, that's, up, that's up to town council. Right. To I would suspect town council is going to have to go make an argument, and yep. hopefully it's at least in our part end of it. Hopefully it's dismissed. Yeah. So. Well. Nothing's going to ever happen to a volunteer board anyways. Town takes care of that. As long as we were not, what was the terminology? Um, capricious and, <laughs> and otherwise, no malice shown. Mm. Uh, and it went on for almost a year. So I, I kind of doubt that. But. Yeah. So need not worry, uh, town council. Yeah, I, mean, I will I will check with Jean tomorrow, yeah. but I know that that's the case. And as far as the country club, same thing. Yeah. So he'll be <laughs> he'll be busy. So for this one, as Nick points out, it does request our response 
Will the town act on that our behalf to respond? Or we don't have to worry about anything no. directly. That's up to town council. Yeah, I, they, they, I don't believe, like, there's a list in there, the town, every member of the zoning board, there might even be other people involved. They just want one response, I think. I don't think they need six. It's always, it's always town council. And it's always town council. Response. And I think town council, in that particular case, has been very involved with it from, from the beginning. Both of them. Yeah, both. Right. Right. It's been a special town council, you might say. Yeah. Yep. Um, in, in a different format, but yeah. you would have to hand it off if that be the case. It's interesting so the town council didn't get served on this latest one. They're not listed. He doesn't have to be. Doesn't have to be. No. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just the witnesses therein were the ones that were served. <laughs> well, right. I think as a member of the board, I've been served multiple times. I know Bob's been served yeah. several. Sai has been probably served at least once. Uh, more than once. More than yeah. once. Yeah, but that's it, that's all. Eric, have you been served? What, what, what I, yeah, you have been. Yeah. Yeah. What I would like to do is when we are served, when it finally gets when resolved, gets settled, we'd like to know I'd like to hear the result. Yeah. But yeah. There, once I think, once or twice I've, we've got notice and it's written up, that it's been what what the resolution is, but most of the time we never hear any results even. Um, depending where it is in the courts, yeah. in the litigation aspect of it, I think we have been at least twice that I can remember, maybe three times, it has come back to the board for a modification um, to settle the, yeah, the litigation. Yeah, right, John, one of the 40 Bs maybe? Was it one of the 40 Bs? It was, might have been one of the 40 Bs, and, and there was one other mm -hmm. one that came back. Right. I've never experienced that. It did come yeah. back, and actually town council came with with it to make us aware of what the situation is and how to move forward on it. But ultimately, that's the board's decision. Well, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion a little bit That would be great. Do I have a second to that motion? One second. Nick seconds. <laughs> Any discussion? No. All in favor? Yeah, yeah. Okay. 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 Okay.